what if end users had the ability to fix their own system issues without calling you for support? Well, today, find out how Tanium helps you triage mass issues with endpoints to see who is in pain right now and then empower those same users to remediate the issue themselves. Welcome back to Tanium Tech Talks. I'm your host, Ashley McGlone. And you know what? It's that time of year again. It's time to sign up for Tanium Converge, where you'll get hands-on labs with the latest goodness, take certification exams, meet other Tanium users, take your chances at Capture the Flag, and so much more. I hope to see you there. And if you can find me, all right, I'm gonna, if you can find me, I will have a pocket full of these fancy schmancy Tanium guitar picks. That's right. So find me at Converge and ask me for a guitar pick. I'm going to have them with me. All right. I look forward to seeing you there. So check out the agenda and sign up today at converge.tanium.com. Well, if you've been in IT very long, You've probably joked about keeping the users happy, and that's all funny until it's your own machine having the problems, right? Well, Tanium's platform is great for automating, triaging, remediating at scale. That's what we do. We find it and fix it fast. But sometimes the user's operating system simply lacks the bits or APIs to give us complete control. And it's in times like these, we need the user's feedback or participation at scale. And that's the problem known as digital employee experience or DEX. So help me welcome back to the show today, Jason Stow, to tell us all about it. Welcome back, Jason. Hey, Ashley, thank you very much for having me. Super excited to be here. Yeah, I am uh, a TAM or was a TAM here at Tanium. I've been here for nine wonderful years. Uh, in the last year or so, I've moved over to the product management organization working on the digital employee experience solution area. So super excited to be here, and I'm super excited to to show you guys what we can do in this area. Well, welcome back, Jason. Uh, wow, nine years. Man, that that, that is legendary status here at Tanium. Uh, that's great. You've seen uh, so much in that time. Well, this is the latest new thing that you've gotten to, to do here at Tanium. So tell us, what is digital employee experience? Yeah, so so Dex, as it's officially referred to, is, is really the uh, ability of the organization to hone in on what the end user is experiencing um, on their workstations or their, their devices, right? So we want to be able to be acutely aware of any... Uh, productivity impacting issues, anything that might not be allowing the user to do their job, which ultimately impacts the business's bottom line. So Tanium can do a lot of things at scale, but how how, how do we just know if a user's having a bad day with Tanium? Yeah, that's a really good question. So there's a couple different ways that we can go about it. So really two sides to that digital employee experience coin. We've got the quantitative, like we've we've got metrics uh, that we know we have an agent running on people's systems. We can get all these really uh, fantastic performance metrics. Um, but then we have the qualitative side of that coin, is which is sentiment, user sentiment, right? So how do we how do we gather that? And it's really done by deploying surveys out to end users and um, having users participate in these surveys. And that can be on a a wide variety of different topics, right? If it's straight up sentiment, ask them about, um, you know, anything that might be top of mind for the organization that's happening at that point of time, or it could be related to something specifically happening on their endpoint for performance, or maybe we've deployed some patches or some new tools. And we want to get feedback from the user on that. Um, participation rates are much higher in surveys when they're done on endpoints versus email. So you're really um, in tune with the actual performance and uh, well-being of that user's endpoint. So Jason, you said quantitative and qualitative. So if I'm tracking with you, quantitative, that's the Tanium stuff. That's the stuff we can see. Apps are crashing, CPU spiking, right? But then there's qualitative. And you said people don't often reply to surveys and email. I'm guessing like SurveyMonkey or Microsoft Forms, you know, something like that, Google Forms, whatever you use in your company. But we're putting it in their face now. So um, how is this different then? Because uh, we've got, so we've got performance data. Is there any way to tie that to the surveys? Yeah, absolutely. That's a really good question, Ashley. Um, 
We have triggers, uh, which we refer to as uh, conditional surveys inside of Engage, which we'll be looking at here in a minute. But um, basically, we can get these performance metrics in real time or any any piece of state data off the endpoint, installed applications, what have you, and then trigger that survey campaign based on that information, right? So we're not just uh, shooting from the hip and sending these surveys out blind like may, might, you might do with an email distribution list. These are the people that may, have, may be having these problems front and center. So if I hear what you're saying, let's say uh, Chrome just had an update and Titanium Performance is showing us that Chrome is crashing on some machines. And we can set up a survey to the user, this new Engage module that says, hey, is Chrome having a bad day? Is that the kind of thing you're talking about? Then like moving on from there? Absolutely. Yeah. We can tie these trigger conditions to any type of performance event, um, application crashes, uh, disk latency, CPU events, memory, things like that, or any other piece of data you want to get from the Tanium platform. Installed applications is a popular one. Lots lots of different data points and, and uh, art of the possible there as far as trigger conditions. It's a... <laughs> I'm just thinking about this, like, so Tanium always talks about visibility, right? We can see everything. Now we can read the user's mind. <laughs> <laughs> right. Now we exactly. can see it all. I mean, it's like, how do you, what are you thinking about, you know, throwing your laptop through the window right now, right? So we can ask them, hey, are you having a bad day? We saw this stuff going on in your box. Or we could just ask them, you know, any other kind of corporate uh, type notice they just want to send out and ask, you know, survey employees, we can do that too. But this sounds really interesting. So uh, let's, let's do a demo. Awesome. Sounds good. So let's go ahead and jump in here. Um, I do want to say, Ashley, that when we refer to uh, DEX here at Tanium, Digital Employee Experience, that is really two different solutions or, or uh, modules at Tanium. That is the Tanium Performance Module and the Tanium Engage Module. So Engage is pretty new, um, but Performance has been on the market for um, you know a few years now. But we did add some nice enhancements um, to the performance module as part of DEX. So let me go ahead and start off just by showing you um, some of the new things in the performance module. Um, and I really want to hone in on this new performance score feature. So this is that quantitative uh, 30,000 30, foot view uh, of what's happening on the endpoint. So we get a quick heads up view of the health of my endpoint. And if it's having any problems in any of the different areas we're monitoring for performance, application crashes, memory, CPU, disk latency, disk capacity, things like that. We assign it a score from zero to 100. Um, we're tracking these things over time. Um, so this is that quick quantitative view of the endpoint health. And what's nice about this is we all of these are tied to Tanium sensors. All of these messages are based off Tanium sensors. Um, so that is a, a, a feed in or an ingress uh, to a trigger condition in, in the engage module. So um, we can see here we've got scores. Um, it's very easy to hone in on endpoints that might be having specific issues. So the lower the score, the better the day that that endpoint is having and the user on that endpoint is having. So we can use these metrics to, let's say we want to launch uh, campaigns or surveys to these end users to validate their experience. So this is one of those metrics uh, that we can use to, to, to achieve that. So really just even just a general Tanium data, just without popping a survey to the user, we can see like you've got models in here. We can see, okay, that we know that old, uh, that old model that we've still got a few users on that laptop version. Uh, it's clear they're suffering right here. So we need to maybe bump them up in the refresh, something like that. This, this is great data. Yeah. Yeah, it's absolutely, it's pretty astounding what we can actually do here. Uh, and just drilling into this report, we have a roll-up score, but if we wanted to get a little more detailed and find out what specifically was wrong with that endpoint or why that endpoint was having a bad day. Yeah, so if we need to get more fine detailed data about the performance score, we can actually look at the category that may be causing a lower performance score. For, so for example, I just looked at this one endpoint and I can see that it's memory and application crash and issues that are causing the low performance score on this endpoint. Well, I'm just thinking about that feature in Microsoft Windows and forgive me for not having the name off the top of my head, but there, it shows you like this kind of health score of the endpoint. So now we've got this enterprise wide and this this goes for Windows, Mac and Linux as well. Yep, that's right. Performance score works in all, all major operating systems. Oh, that's great. All right. Show us more. Awesome. So that's a quick 
dive into the performance score. It's one of the new features you're going to get um, with the DEX licensing bundle. Um, I want to jump over to the new Engage module. And this is really where all of the qualitative data uh, from the end users, uh, you, that's where you're going to grab that. Um, but we also have these these trigger conditions that we marry up to the, the, the quantitative data for performance and from anywhere else in the Tanium uh, core platform. So um, let's talk about some self-service remediations, right? So, um, you know, help desk is really busy, right? They're inundated with tickets all the time. We want to make their jobs easier, right? So if we've got some low hanging fruit, let's say low disk, or there's some consistent issues with specific processes or browsers using up a lot of CPU, we want to go ahead and put that in the user's hands to auto remediate, right? So we've got a lot of capabilities built in um, around remediation issues. So that's one place I want to start with. Um, let's, let's go take a look at what that looks like here. So here we have uh, a list of surveys that have been deployed to our environment. If we jump in on this low disk space example, so this is a survey campaign that's been sent out to my organization. Um, and what's really important to look at here is a couple different things. We have uh, the concept of remediations inside of Engage, and these are performed by the user. Two different main types, uh, tasks and link remediations. This task type, um, we ship about 15 of these task type remediations out of the box. This example is do, doing a user disk cleanup, right? So um, we want to target uh, this campaign to systems that are having low disk space, right? So this trigger condition here, um, we've used an out of the box. I think this is a core sensor that's looking for critically low disk status. So super flexible, right? These are all parameterized so we can set the thresholds differently. Um, but this is just an example. We could use um, a performance sensor here. But main thing here is we're looking at uh, machines that have critically low disk space. And then we've tied a remediation action to the actual um, survey choice, right? So if a user clicks yes, then we're going to go ahead and fire this, this remediation off. So we can see what the end user's experience looks like here. This is the survey. Uh, and when they click yes, back up here under the uh, responses, this is where we can see how the users participated, what they clicked on in the survey. Um, so we can see that we had two people, two endpoints click yes. Um, and they went ahead and auto remediated uh, their their low disk space issue. So this is just one example. We get positive uh, confirmation that people are running these these fixes in their environment, and we should be able to see our help desk tickets related to these these type of incidents start going down. Well, that's music to my ears. You know, I, I used to teach PowerShell for years, and um, I was told folks, hey, go to the the help desk, a service desk, and ask for what's the top 10, 20 issues, and look for something you can automate. And then it becomes programmatic, and it, it helps close tickets a lot faster. So here we're closing tickets before they're even opened. Exactly. That's, uh, ticket avoidance. That's, that's a great use case. Yeah. Another really good example here is this browser issue. Um, this example is using Google, uh, Google Chrome. It can be anything. But what I want to draw your attention to here is our ability to issue those remediations on these real-time performance metrics we're getting off the endpoint. So this trigger condition is tied to a performance sensor that's looking for um, uh, a CPU utilization over a specific threshold, right? And again, this is all customizable. Might be a little low for this demo environment, but I think you get the idea here. We're looking for bad behaving browsers or any bad behave app application. And, and these out of the box remediation tasks make it pretty simple to automate this and put this power back in the hand of your users. If you've logged any time at all on the service desk, you know what people normally are going to call about. And you see these this kind of ebbs and flows. What's what's the popular issue this week or what is the all time popular issue? You can just automate those right here. And it's it's Tanium, right? So you can create your own sensors and packages to really make this do a lot. Yeah, and that, that's a great segue, Ashley. I'm really excited about one of the new features we just released uh, this earlier this week, actually. Uh, if we click on this remediations tab, so we, we have all these out-of-the-box remediations, which are great, um, but since we have a super extensible platform that we're built on top of, let's put the power back in the hand of the operator. Um, if I have a certain business application or a certain workflow I know that's problematic for my organization, I might already have a package in Tanium or I have a script sitting somewhere in a folder. Um, and I know this is a perfect use case. So I want to go ahead and create my own remediation tasks, right? So remediation tasks inside of Engage are built off of Tanium packages, right? They live in the platform. It's it's easy to digest those. Um, so it's really easy here to go ahead and create your own examples, 
or your own your own uh, packages. It's as easy as uh, creating something new here um, and going ahead. And if I click Add Package, I just want to visualize it. We're browsing. We're going out to Tanium, and we're just selecting the packages we want to create our remediation tasks from. We also have the ability to run these. Uh, we also have the ability to run these remediation tasks as the user. Okay, so because uh, I know normally by default Tanium's running as local system, so uh, use so we pop up this uh, thing says, "Hey, it looks like your disk." Is, <laughs> it sounds like Clippy, right? Hey, your disk is running all space. Would you like to free some up? And so they hit yes, and they can run in their user context that would have their user profile folders even in scope. That's exactly right. So when we we launch things, we can run it as system, which you know obviously the normal user is not going to have the the ability to do that normally, but we can expose that one little task for them to do that. Or if it's something that needs to run as their user or any of the user profile, like um, you know relaunching a process or maybe um, you know emptying the recycle bin, something like that, you have that fine grain ability to to launch as that logged on user. All right, so I want to see what it looks like to create the actual survey and the questions because I'm I'm thinking here, okay, if I have to go push a survey to a bunch of machines, I don't know if they got low disk space or not. Is there a way to like create a survey that just runs all the time and it's always looking for machines that are going to all of a sudden hit that criteria at three in the afternoon and I don't have to sit there and push the survey at 255? Yeah, absolutely. So the the construct for uh, surveys is sur a survey is going to consist of one or more survey questions. Um, a good example would just be creating the survey object itself here. So if I click create new survey, um, this is the workflow I get. I simply give it a name, uh, and this is where I tie it to that trigger condition. We can use one or more trigger conditions, uh, and that's you know the performance thresholds, it's installed applications, a certain build of Windows. We can and or or these together. Um, and we have to have that actually evaluate true, all those conditions evaluate true for the end user to see that survey. So we can target a wide set of computer groups uh, via targeting, um, but it, the, the survey campaign will only show to those users that match this trigger condition. Now, and then we go- is, is the trigger optional? Do I have to have a trigger or can I just survey everybody? Good question. The The trigger is totally optional. If you wanna send the survey out to everyone in a computer group, uh, that's something you can totally do. Because I'm just thinking like business type surveys that are unrelated to system performance. That's a great use case. I could say so I've got a computer group for all my machines at site, you know, X, Y, Z geographically. I can just go survey those people at that site. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. So once you define your optional trigger condition, right, you don't have to have it. You add or you can create on the fly here your, your actual questions. So if I choose an existing question. Uh, we'll just pick this one for example. Now I have a survey question as part of my survey. I'm good to go to either save this as a draft, come back, work on it later, um, or I can go ahead and schedule this now. And when I choose to schedule it, uh, this is where we select the schedule type. One time just means that survey has a finite start and end time. It's a week by default, or if it's ongoing, right? So if you have those campaigns for low disk or whatever other issue you want to auto remediate, maybe you want to leave those running indefinitely, right? So I don't have to worry about them falling on their face or ending oh, nice. without me knowing about yeah. it, right? So you just set those for ongoing. And then here's where you select your targeting or your, your computer groups for the, the possible pool of, of candidates that to receive the, the survey. We do have some nice options too for the user if they want to postpone or decline, or we can even give the, the operator the power to make these surveys anonymous if that's what they wanna do. I know some of our users are familiar with the end user notification dialogue for deploy and so forth. Are we gonna have the same like set the logo and the title bar and all that kind of same stuff in the survey prompt? So. All of that branding is uh, customizable, and that's controlled through the uh, EUN or end user uh, notifications okay. uh, workbench yeah. right now. Um, mm -hmm. We are going to be um, introducing some new capabilities uh, around notifications in the in the near future here, and we will have some custom branding uh, capabilities in the survey or in the notification notification come up with that. So this is hot new features from Tanium. I'm curious to know what you've heard already from early adopters. People are really excited that they're they're able to glean the work that they're doing, the work that their IT staff is putting in and how that's affecting their users, right? So um, they don't have to like shoot from the hip or guess about the the patches they're pushing out or maybe, you know, we knew there was a problem with the driver uh, in this build and people's machines are blue screening. Like I want to get 
positive validation from the end users that um, this is uh, resolving their issue. Uh, Ashley, I do want to show you real quick here um, mm -hmm. a really way to close that feedback loop. Uh, just an example here as far as this device performance survey that uses that performance score metric as an input for a trigger condition. So earlier we looked at that um, uh, quantitative feedback we're getting from performance module for the performance score. So in this survey, um, we are targeting um, endpoints that may have low running performance scores, right? So uh, users have different pain points. Some people suffer in silence. Some people um, you know, may be fine with their endpoint uh, having a lower score in a certain area, right? It may not be affecting their daily job, uh, but we wanna be have a way to actually confirm that. So here, if we target these low performing uh, systems via the performance score, we can actually triage the people that may be having the most problems, important problems first. Man, I, I just have to say this is this is good because uh, when, when the the people that suffer in silence, right? Sometimes they don't suffer in silence. They maybe they're not calling the help desk, but they're out there on Reddit and they're smashing the company because they give me this piece of junk laptop, right? Exactly. So, uh, so this is a chance to actually proactively catch those people who wouldn't norm necessarily call the help desk. And hey, can we help you? It looks like your machine's not in good shape today. Uh, this the more you talk about this, the more I'm convinced. Love it. A couple more really cool features that I think uh, users are going to like, and it helps them assess the, the health of their environment, is this survey type we added uh, very recently here for uh, sentiment, right? So we can ask any question we want to out of the box, but here we're actually assigning that quantitative number to a sentiment, right? So we ask a question about what the user is thinking, um, and we're able to get um, the actual point our score assigned to that survey result right here. So it's a five point Likert scale system. Um, and based on the survey responses, we can um, actually trend or track sentiment across surveys across the organization. So this is the new survey type. Um, it's very easy to hone in on the actual end users information and who's taken the survey. Um, but I wanna show you um, how we tie this in at the organizational level. So based on the sentiment surveys, we have this employee sentiment dashboard, makes it super easy to find out, you know, compared to my um, performance score, I think these things should be, you know, on the same uh, line here. They should have a positive correlation and we can track the work we're doing in IT uh, compared to the actual sentiment of the end user. And it's really easy. I can look at the overall performance score for all of these different surveys, or I can track the specific survey sentiment across my individual surveys. So I think it makes it super powerful, flexible, uh, since I can you know, slice and dice this data across computer groups. I can slice and dice this across sentiment surveys in time, right? To get a really good point uh, in time picture of, of the, the health and the, uh, the feedback from our organization, whether it's new patches that are rolling out or something else that may have happened in the environment. I just really keep going back to, you know, the stereotypes in IT of uh, we don't have a lot of budget. You, you get the hardware you get, but this is, this is a way that you can really measure that, especially when it comes time. I mean, thinking practically like our asset module, giving you all that asset data, right? When it comes time for hardware refresh, you can come in here and really see, okay, what's underperforming in the environment? Who's really unhappy with their machine? And you can go make some people happy. You know, it's not every day you get to do that in IT. So this is yeah. pretty cool. Yeah, and if yeah. you really want to hone in on the user's journey, um, we make that super simple to do too. Um, if we're drilling in um, from the sentiment surveys or the sentiment page here, we have this per endpoint or per user view. So here I get a heads up view of the sentiment score on this endpoint compared to the performance score. So right away, I know that I something someone is unhappy on this endpoint. So I might want to drill in and take a closer look and see what's happening. Um, so via our endpoint details or commonly referred to as single endpoint view or SEV, we have also added this digital employee experience uh, per endpoint. So you can see all of the different surveys that an endpoint has participated in, um, who's participated in those surveys. We can see the sentiment scores and then we're comparing that endpoint sentiment score to the average in our environment. So it makes it super simple. I can see everyone that's taken them here. And if I want to drill on, on this unhappy Adam guy, I can get some user details here so I can maybe see what department he works in or, or who to call and see if uh, we can make his day a little better. 
I, I'm just thinking of Mr. Rogers. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. <laughs> yeah, we can really make some people happy. Well, uh, Jason, we're out of time. Uh, anything else as we wrap up here? We've hit all the highlights. Uh, you know, we're we've got a big investment. Um, we're really committed to to making this deck solution a a first class solution for our customers, and we're really excited to see this thing grow. Hey. I saw you are running this as a lab at Converge. You want to give a quick plug for your lab? Awesome. Yeah, please come check us out. We're doing a, a DEX lab here. It's going to comprise of uh, a bunch of different uh, trigger-based surveys. You'll get to play around with performance and engage and really get to get under the hood and tinker there. I think it'll be fun. Well, Jason, thanks for coming to Tanium Tech Talks again to show us the latest in digital employee experience. So there you have it, folks. Uh, this is more than just a, a latest feature from Tanium. You have a chance to really make some people happy. And that's fun because we don't get to do that every day in our job. Uh, sometimes it's just grinding away, looking at logs and trying to find you know things. But hey, we can really make a difference in our users' lives. And so, uh, and that includes our own experience as well. And we've got this rich data to build a survey and see, okay, we just pushed this new version of the app. Did that help you? And yes or no, right? So we can get that feedback from our users in ways that can really take our job to the next level here in IT ops, IT security. So uh, Jason, thanks again for this tour. And don't forget, go to converge.tanium.com, sign up for those labs and get, get your hands on decks there at Converge coming up this November in Austin. So thanks for joining us for today's Tanium Tech Talk. Until next time, go Tanium.